Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on our software testing bootcamp where we are learning the fundamentals concepts of the testing. And we're getting into the next chapter now. We are talking about the test types and the test levels. Here we'll be further exploring how test types get blended with the dose of the test levels. And we'll be talking about the different test levels under functional and non-functional testing. But to get started with is the first segment we are talking about the functional test levels. And here we'll be covering several levels like unit, integration, system, and acceptance to understand in more detail that what these levels are. To start with today is the unit testing being the very first level and we'll be getting started to talk about the same. To talk about the very first level that is unit testing it is the first level of testing which is performed on any application no matter which product or which software or which application you're talking about the number one thing is of course to talk about unit testing where we start testing the smallest testable part of an application now that could be also a definition of the word unit now people generally say hey i understand what is unit testing all about like testing this uh, units or modules of an application but what exactly a unit is what exactly a module is and how can that be defined now, number one thing here is an application can be broken down into simplest part where it is developed by a developer or even when it comes to testing we talk about that what is the smallest thing we can test in the application sometimes it's not necessary that what do you see as a page in the application is only the testable item sometimes you do understand that maybe even at the field level a test case can be executed for example if i'm having a name field which accepts characters alone as soon as i fill something there and move to the next field it validates and tells me an error message right next to it that oh it does not have the right values right so sometimes the component testing or unit testing could be at right there at the unit level called as testing the first and the smallest part of the application at the field level as well. So it certainly depends. People have different practices because they work with different types of applications. If you move into the hardware industry, the smallest testable part could be even a smallest part of the mechanical work component. Or if I talk about the electronics and electrical units, the diodes, the transistors, or any other you know smallest component which you find on the PCB, or a motherboard of the computer is a component which can be tested independently. So the point here is to understand that unit testing is not the same when it comes to different applications. It's just a very generic definition. That is, what is that smallest testable part in your product? And that what you start testing is called as unit testing. And it, this smallest part could be anything depending on the type of product, type of application, right? Some cases it could be smallest component could be a text field. Some cases it could be a page which you have finally created. Now talking about the exact definition of unit testing is more about testing the functionality and behavior of each and every single component. Now what is functionality and what is behavior? A functionality cer certainly means what this particular thing is expected to do by default. For example, if I have a text field Everyone understands a text field should accept the inputs and it should be enabled to do that. If it is disabled, I cannot do anything there. If it is enabled, I should be able to enter something there, which is another expectation. But this is by default. On top of it comes the behavior. The behavior is what your requirement is, that what the business wants this particular text field to do. So expectation comes, hey, this field is about the name of the person Next text field is about the phone number of the person. Next text field is about the email ID of the person. Or similarly, there are so many text fields which can do the job of capturing address, capturing country, state, zip code, etc. Now, if you see, the component is exactly the same. That is, it is a text field. And text fields are modified to behave as expected. That's the reason we say testing the behavior of the component too. Because not necessarily every text field should only accept characters. Some text field accept numbers alone, like phone number. Now here, this is also a text field, but only accepts digits up to 10 digits. If I try entering characters, etc., may not take the value. Zip code, 
it again accepts only digits up to five or six depending on the type of country you are in similarly if i talk about email address that's a text field and accepts only anything you know it's a combination of alphanumeric value but in the format someone at the rate example.com right someone at the rate example.com is the behavior we want to set up for this particular field if it is not in this particular format it will give you an error right so the point here is to tell you that unit testing is just not limited to interact with the units it is more about testing the core functionality which is present by default and second is the behavior of that component which we want it to behave like that's where you are meeting the expectations of the requirements given to you the second important thing to talk about is what are the various synonyms of the same the unit testing can be called as component testing module testing program testing structure testing or code testing as well quite often people also prefer to call it as just functional testing alone which means that this is the core functional testing which happens at the unit level post that you only talk about the behavior functionalities are tested right at the core level that is unit testing rest after that it is more about integration system which are mainly from the point of behavior not from the functionality point so sometime even unit testing will be referred to as just functional testing too also a lot of people understand that uh, non-functional testing could be performed only after system testing is done on a product because in order to do non-functional testing like security testing, usability testing, performance testing, these all levels can be done once a system is at least stable, right? An application is ready. Point is, of course you are true. You're right by saying that, but concern is, do you actually just get started after system testing? Because you may have surprises. So do, is, that, is that meaning that the development team or the testing team do not interact until the system testing? No, it's not that way. For example, a performance team who is expecting the system performance to be up to the mark in the sense like when 5,000 people are trying to work on it at the same time, it, the response time should not be greater than three seconds. And we don't wait for system testing to you know, be conducted and pass so that performance testing can kick off and then realize that, oh my God, it's taking 10 seconds you know, at least to process each request, which is going to be a very tedious uh, workaround. That is like people have to rework on several things in order to reduce this to three seconds. So it's always understandable that a non-functional team, non-functional testing team gets involved right here at the unit level. And when the unit testing team is performing the testing here, they also have some minute information to capture. For example, at the corporate, at the program level you can quickly check what's the response time of the program or is there a variable which is declared but never used is there a variable which is used but never declared right is there a memory leak concept like returning zero at the end of the program is it releasing the memory if this program is no longer used so such kind of reviews can happen right here at the unit level by the performance testing team Again, usability testing is about user friendliness. So you don't wait for the system to get prepared to just say whether it is user friendly or not. Some of the basic reviews, of course the execution can happen after system testing, but basic reviews can happen right earlier, right from the design phase. Or even talking about reviewing usability requirements. So none of the non-functional team awaits the system testing to be completed which is the third phase in our discussion in order to get started and this point is talking about that that unit testing may be required to test core functionality and some specific non-functional characteristics as well now we cannot call it as non-functional testing but the point is some of the key characteristics and parameters of non-functional testing can be pre-pawned to these levels so none of the levels are restricted to only functional testing the non-functional team can very well join hands with you, can coordinate and get all that necessary information, what they want to assist their non-functional testing executions, which will be done later, right? Another point to understand that what kind of approach do we use? So if you remember in our previous discussions, we have understood that there are two different approaches to do dynamic testing. That is white box and black box. It's just a best practice again, 
that for unit testing, we prefer using white box, which simply means at the code level, right? We do testing at the code level and we uh, preferably do that. It's not a hardcore classification, not a hardcore distribution that unit testing is a type of white box or white box is a type of unit testing. Tomorrow, if the trend changes, if the best practices are modified, you may do it with black box testing as well. So there's no such specific reason why do we do that. It's just that uh, done at the programming level, it will be more beneficial and more resourceful, right? And there are two types of unit testing here at this point, which we understand that is positive testing and negative testing. The positive testing means when you try with valid set of data and test it. Similarly, on the other hand, when you say negative testing, it simply means when you try with invalid set of data. For example, if I have a text field, which is supposed to be accepting only characters as input. Now, only characters, if you enter, is called as valid inputs and called as positive testing. After that, when you try with anything other than non-characters, right? Anything other than characters is what I mean here. Anything other than characters like a digit, a number, alphanumeric values, spaces, or anything else, right? Special characters. That's what you call it as invalid inputs and called as negative testing. So each and every component should be tested for positivity, which is like accepting the valid inputs and negativity, which means rejecting the invalid inputs. Both the ways it should work fine to approve that it is meeting the expectation, right? I hope that makes sense and adds a little value to your understanding on unit testing. Should you have anything else, we are here. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.